how to use the pixelate filter in a Fimsy photo. First thing to do, select a layer, then go to filters, distort, and then pixelate. Get a panel, one simple feature, quantization. That's all you get. And um, well, it defaults to one, which is completely pointless. However, what you can do, you can just change it. Now you go to about 100, you can see it now. If you obviously reduce it very, very low, you get nice square blocks, and that's all you get, square blocks. Now generally, I must admit, I push it up to about there. Maybe you go for there. But it's a great way of creating squares, and also creating sort of blurred images in all kinds of different squared ways. You can also enter a value here. So if you don't want to just use the slider, you can always just say enter 100. Once you've done that, simply click apply. Well, that's it in the basic state. However, what you can do, of course, as with lots of these filters, you've got filters and repeat, so you can reapply it, which may or may not be effective, but you can also go to layer menu and fade pixelate as well. So you can just fade it, which is great for creating all kinds of different effects such as this. So you can just go say, darken, multiply. You can also change the fade or opacity for the effect. So you can see more or less of the image. Once you're happy with that, simply click apply. Now you can also undo, of course, just go back to the original image. What you can also do, as with all these things, it's just a layer. So you can duplicate that layer. So just go to a layer and duplicate. So you've got now two, two layers there. And what you do, go to filters and again distort and go down to pixelate. And of course you can combine it with other filters as well. Don't have to just combine it with Pixelate. So you can just apply that and then click apply. Now we've got, we've got this design, it's on a layer. And you can just blend that with the original image. So you can just go over here to layers and go to normal, darken and, and run through, say overlay, etc. But also what you can do, say just deselect that layer. You can go to the background layer, go to filters and again, maybe apply a different effect, Blur, Gaussian Blur, perfectly reasonable, or Distort and Pixelate, and just set a different value. So maybe greater than that, simply click Apply. Now once you've done that, go back to the, obviously the original there, and now you can go to Blend Modes, and you can run through and create all number of combinations of different blocks designs. So you can create a variety of different designs from a single, and obviously you don't have to go extreme settings like 200, 300, maybe use 10 or 20 for each of the layers, just vary them. So that's one option as well. So I'm just gonna go back now to the original image. Now, got that background. Now what you can also do, you can use channels as well. Channels are super useful, so you can go to view, down to studio, and channels. So you think, what can you do there? Well, you can go to composite red, just simply select that. You're in the red channel now. Red channel, you can go to filters, gain distort, and pixelate. And you can set it to a value. And that's just for the red channel. Now if you see, you go over here to composite green, you can go to filters, of course I could repeat it, but I can also go to distort, and again I could use any of the other filters, but pixelate as well. And I can just maybe crease it to that. And then what I can do, just go back to the image. And you can see what happens. You end up, instead of a standard pixelization, you've got a quite an unusual effect combining multiple channels. You don't have to use the blue channel. You can if you want to. I'm just going to put that back to there. Always make certain you click that. Otherwise, you'll end up working just in the red channel or blue channel, etc. What you can also do, and this is a recent feature, you've got this layer and pattern layers. So you can go to layer and down to pattern layer from selection. Just select that and you get a pattern layer just with any image. It doesn't have to be this one, of course. You can go over here, mirror, and you can resize it. But what you can now do is you can apply the effect to this instead of, and also, of course, what you've got, you've got the option, you can also rotate it and do other things. But you can go to filters and distort and pixelate. Again, change the setting, and you can see as you do that, that's applied all across the layers. So again, click there, you've applied the effect, and now you can see what happens. You've got a nice pixelization effect 
across a pattern design. And you can, of course, rotate that design, move that around, move it. And of course, what you can do is just to layer. So you can just go to layer and you can go to duplicate. You could also use duplicate linked if you want to use that. So just duplicate. And with that, you've got two pattern layers. Just shift it slightly. And again, it's a layer. Well, you know, you can just go over here to the right side there, that menu, and go maybe difference or hue or divide. And also what you've got, you've still got it live. You can still modify these settings. So you can see what happens then. You can create all number of combinations of effect like this. Well, also what you can do, once you've done that, of course, you can combine them. Turn around and say, well, actually, I'm just going to get rid of the background layer there. Don't want that anymore. So I can combine them now. So I'll just go over here to Layer and Merge Visible. So it just becomes a standard pixel layer. Well, I can now apply the effect to this. Let's just remove those pattern layers as well. Don't need them anymore. I can simply go to Filters and Distort and Pixelate. And just apply that. Now, it might not be particularly brilliantly effective, but you can see what happens. You can get all kinds of different combinations of effects. And what you can still do is exactly the same as before. You could go for layer and new pattern layer from selection and so on and so on. So you can create a variety of different designs. Very quick and easy using this. So you maybe resize that. If you're happy with that design, again, what you can do, you can rasterize it, flatten it. So it becomes a single layer. What you can also do, and I'm just gonna go back now to the original layers after all, getting rid of them all. It's always the way. So there's the original design. What you can do, you can also color it because you notice one thing, there's no color feature, and it, which I think is a pity. However, what you can do, you can always go to filters and distort and obviously the pixelate. Just change that. So you end up with this, obviously, lots and lots of browns and blacks. You might not want that. Well, you can always go for layer and new adjustment layer, and you can go down here, maybe levels. Just use that. Just change that. White level and so on and so on. So you can brighten things up. Maybe go to other ones as well. Layer and new adjustment layer, and down to maybe channel mixer. Just try out different ones, get a whole range of them. Maybe you want a more red design, just increase the red there. And now you've got that effect. And you can always remove them. You've got this pixelate design. Now, of course, what you can also do, like before, just layers. You can always flatten it. And you can rastify the whole thing or merge visible. So you've got that design there. Again, you can go to filters and distort and pixelate again. Just create a number of different combinations with this and also what you can do, again, with this, you can always apply effects. You don't have to keep it just as is here. So you can go to filters, maybe go to blur and Gaussian blur. Apply a nice blurring effect. Click apply. And of course, you've got layer and fade Gaussian blur. So you can sort of blend it. So you've got a nice fading effect, like blurry effect there. But you can also just then fade it. So go for normal difference, hard light. There's not much difference, but certainly... You can always try them, and if they're not great, well, they're not great. What you can also do, of course, is, and I haven't done that yet, selections. So you can simply select a particular area. So maybe you select that area. You can apply the effect to that. So you can go to Filters, and Distort, and Pixelate. So you've got Pixelate there. Apply the you know, pixelation effect there. Just change that, maybe make that fairly small. You can go to some other part of the image. Apply a different one, so Filters, Distort and Pixelate. Don't have to apply exactly the same. And again, just set that. Click Apply. Or maybe go that selection and then go down here and again, a different setting. Pixelate again. Click Apply. So you can build up a very complex image from a very simple photo. Lots and lots of these. And of course, what you can also do, you've got other filters such as filters and let's say blur and maximum blur. And that one creates some very nice, more rounded. So you can create that sort of pixel effect, but instead of having it just sort of square, you can like create nice rounded designs just by using the maximum blur. Click apply. And that's a run through of a fair amount of features. But of course, the pixelate filter has tons of other features.
So I really recommend just check it out. I hope you found this tutorial of interest. Always adding new tutorials all the time. A like or dislike, always appreciated. If you've got any comments, please put some comments below. If you've got any questions about anything about this filter, please let me know in that. Thank you much.